So, a long head of biceps tendinopathy. This is a condition that is commonly misunderstood that we get asked about a lot in practice. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Hey guys, Khalid here. Welcome back to Clinical Physio. So, a long head of biceps tendinopathy. The first thing to get to grips with is the anatomy. So let's dive into our 3D model to show you what it's all about. So here's the anatomy. Let's look at the biceps muscle, or what it's more medically referred to as the biceps brachii muscle. And the word biceps is really important because that tells us that this muscle has two heads. And we can quite clearly see this on the anatomical model where the origin of the biceps is where we have those two heads. We have a long head and a short head. Now, we're obviously going to be focusing on the long head, which is the one that sustains more pathology, probably because of the fact that it is so closely knitted with the shoulder. And in fact, it actually runs into the intraarticular capsule of the shoulder, i.e. it runs inside the capsule, which also makes it more profound to pathology. So looking at this long head tendon, it runs through the bicipital groove, which, as you can see, is a little indentation in the proximal humerus, and it's kept in place by the transverse humeral ligament. The tendon then runs over the top of the proximal humerus, and this is the part that becomes intraarticular because we have a great big capsule which runs over the top of this before it inserts into the supraglenoid tubercle of the scapula the tubercle superior to the glenoid. But of course, the other key attachment that the long head of biceps tendon has is a partial attachment to the glenoid labrum. And we can see here that labrum. And in fact, the long head of biceps tendon blends into that superior labrum when it attaches to the supraglenoid tubercle. Now, of course, a really key pathology that can be impacted by this is a slap lesion. And if you want more information about slap tears, check out the video link that we have at the end of this video. We've got a brilliant resource for you on slap tears. Okay, so that's the anatomy. Let's dive into the pathology itself. So a long head of biceps tendinopathy, like all other tendinopathies really, can occur due to an irritation or an overloading of that long head of biceps tendon. Who tends to present with this overloading? Well, we're looking more at males rather than females, predominantly between the ages of about 35 and 60. Who does it occur in? Well, likely it's going to be those who build up a story of repeated use of that tendon. So we're thinking lots of overhead activity. We're thinking manual workers, those who do a lot of lifting. And we expect them to come in and report this pain around the anterior shoulder, which is where that long head of biceps tendon runs through before attaching to the supraglenoid tubercle, as we saw. So we touched upon causes a second ago. Let's go through things in a bit more detail. So we're looking or we're listening more for this story of overloading of this tendon. Now, this can either be a short term period of overloading or a long term period of overloading. So if we're thinking short term, we might be thinking of those who have just gone back to the gym for the first time in a long time and might have overdone it with the weights. Or we might consider someone who over the weekend has done a lot of DIY. Perhaps they were moving house, which involved lots of lifting, perhaps reaching up to grab things from high shelves or maybe putting things in high shelves that may have led to that sudden overload. And we can also be thinking about those who have had this repetitive long term overloading. That's why we think of our manual workers that we mentioned and those who do lots of overhead activity, perhaps your painter decorators. They might be individuals who over a longer period of time present with this little grumble aching around that anterior shoulder. So those are some of the key things to think about in terms of causes. So next, onto the physical examination. What are some of the key things we're looking for? Well, first of all, we might try and palpate the long head of biceps tendon to see if this reproduces our patient's pain. How do we do that? Well, we saw in the anatomy earlier how the tendon runs through the bicipital groove. So we can effectively place our thumb on the anterior shoulder and kind of work our way around, see if we can feel that tendon. 
And a really great way of making sure you've got the right point is to then move the patient's shoulder between external and internal rotation. And as a result, you might be able to feel the tendon flicking in and out underneath your thumb. So that can be a good way of making sure you found it. Palpate, see if it's painful. If it is, that could be one of the simple key measures to finding a long head of biceps tendinopathy. Now, of course, we also want to look at active range of movement of the shoulder, particularly things like active shoulder flexion and active shoulder abduction, we might expect to be sore here. And a top tip is to try and place your patient's arm in a position of external shoulder rotation with supination of the forearm when you're doing those flexion and abduction movements because they also might lead to a little bit increase in the activity of that tendon whilst you're doing it. And then, of course, we might be thinking about resisted tests, particularly here. Again, we might do resisted shoulder flexion, again, with the elbow straight, long lever, external rotation of the shoulder and supination of the forearm to try and bias that tendon a little bit more. We can even do it with simple elbow flexion in a resisted manner. And a test that you may well be familiar with is speed test. This is where we ask our patient to sit in front of the examiner and we reproduce that resisted movement of shoulder flexion with that long lever supination and external rotation. And we expect that this can reproduce their symptoms of anterior shoulder pain. But also be aware that that test can just as easily irritate the rotator cuff tendons. So therefore, try and be specific when you're asking your patient does that reproduce your specific pain? Great, so how do we manage this in practice? Well, the first thing to do is really educate our patient because there's a good chance that the same overloading that took place that might have irritated the tendon first time round might be the same activity that we then have to deload or underload in the short term in order to give that long head of biceps tendon an element of rest and recovery. So we need to explain this to the patient so they understand why we're trying to reduce the amount of activity they're doing. Of course, we also want to make sure that their pain levels are under control. So we can do this by simply referring them to speak to their GP to talk about painkillers, perhaps with some non-steroidal anti-inflammatories as well, to see if we can get their pain levels a little bit better. We know that with tendinopathies around the shoulder, reducing pain is a critical intervention in order to try and improve their symptoms. So this is really important. Next, Rehab exercises. I tend to start with quite simple resisted elbow flexion and then try and build up difficulty and bias to the long head of biceps tendon as we go. How do we do this? Well, we can quite simply start with some isometric elbow flexion with the elbow in a 90 degree position with resistance being applied at the proximal or top of the forearm. And then gradually we can move that resistant point a little bit more distally on the forearm to make it a bit harder. You can then make it even harder by extending the elbow with your future sets as this will put more load through the long head of biceps tendon until you feel you're at a point where the elbow is almost fully extended and you are performing the movement really well. So when we're looking at the reps and sets for these isometrics, a key priority is keeping pain under control, as we mentioned a little bit earlier. So I might start with something like a five second hold, eight reps, two sets, but crucially asking the patient to only put two to three out of 10 power into the movement because we want to try and keep things under control in the first instance. You can then use your clinical reasoning to try and gradually increase the amount of power that they're putting into the movement as things get more comfortable. We can then do similar things with our concentric strengthening exercises. We can start with the elbow being flexed to about 90 degrees and then gradually build out to positions involving more elbow extension as things get a little bit easier. We can even branch this out further by not only practicing elbow flexion, but then focusing on a little bit of shoulder flexion with this externally rotated supinated position of the arm. Once again, Eight reps and two sets might be a starting point, but make sure it's comfortable and manageable for your patient. If it hurts a lot more the next day, it's also a sign that maybe they were doing too much.
So guys, if you wanted that video on slap tears, you can find it at the top of your screen now. And don't forget to smash that like button if you did enjoy this video, subscribe to our channel for all of our best updates. And remember, we're also on Instagram at Clinical Physio and check out our amazing website, clinicalphysio.com for brilliant resources for physios. I'm Khalid, thank you so much for watching. See you soon here on Clinical Physio.